This is Phil Coulson of New Zealand. In 2010, Phil was in a very unfortunate motorcycle accident that caused doctors to amputate his right leg. For almost two years, Phil decided that he would test out a common prosthetic device known as the socket type device in hopes that he could regain the life that he lived before his accident. However, to his dismay, he actually found that he felt more disabled with this prosthetic device because he had a lack of energy and he also experienced a lot of skin issues. So overall, Phil felt like he couldn't keep up with his family and friends and was just uncomfortable doing day-to-day -day activities. Amputations are a lot more common in the United States than people might think. According to the Amputee Coalition, 507 Americans a day undergo amputations. This is just about filling up a classroom and a half at the Forum every day with people having amputations. And although Phil is only one patient who is using this device and experiencing these problems, a lot of other patients have reported similarities. Therefore, the socket type prosthetic device is not suitable for all lower limb amputee patients. Now, the way that this device works is that it's basically a hard shell and the residual limb just fits right in there. And according to a 2009 New York Times article, the best fit occurs when there are very small adjustments made during an alignment phase. And this helps patients to walk comfortably. However, if these adjustments are not made, then the patient will most likely experience problems. So some of the problems that the patient might experience are skin issues, and these can range across the board. For instance, one patient might have rashes and chafing, and this could be from too loose of a fit if the limb is moving around too much. Another patient might experience blisters or hemorrhaging, and this could be from too tight of a fit that the skin is actually being pinched. And other people might just experience irritation, which could lead to dryness, cracking, and bleeding, and this could be from a varnish that's used in the socket. Another thing that's interesting is that patients with prosthetic device still want to do physical activity. So there was a study done by the US Department of Veteran Affairs, and they basically gave out surveys to patients using devices and said, tell us what you want to do. So the results show that over 40% of both men and women still want to participate in moderate to high levels of physical activity. So they want to run, and they want to bike, and they want to swim, just like you and I, but they might not be able to do so if they're experiencing problems such as skin issues. Patients really deserve a better quality of life than what they're receiving, and there just might be a solution to this. So tonight, I want to talk to you about how osseointegration can help improve patients' quality of lives with lower limb amputations. And the reason that this is so prominent in today's day and age is that there have only been 250 reported cases in the world. And this has been in the European Union and Australia. However, there's been a recent breakthrough in the United States, and this has been at the University of Utah. So the University of Utah has just recently been funded for research and development by DJO, which is a global medical supplier and manufacturer. Furthermore, the FDA has just approved of, approved of a human early feasibility study, which basically means that the university can take 10 patients, undergo the procedures, and track their progress to see if this is something that we would like to implement in our treatment methods in the United States. Tonight, I want to limit myself in a couple ways. First of all, I will only be talking about lower limb amputations. I will not be discussing cost. And due to a lack of time, I cannot discuss complications that will arise during surgery. I would also like to define what constitutes a higher quality of life. So I'm going to say that this is a stable device that is long lasting. So tonight, you will first expect to hear about a two-part procedure, followed by a recovery process, just to get a little bit of background information on the topic. Then I will talk to you about how the device actually becomes anchored to the body, which helps to improve sensation for the patient. And finally, I will do an evaluation between the common socket type prosthetic device and this new osseointegration integration device and see how they compare. So let's first start off with the procedure. So this is a video by the Osseo Integration Group of Australia. And it's a two-part procedure. And the first surgery starts where the doctors open up the residual limb and they actually drill out a part of the bone. Now, where this bone was, they replaced this with a titanium screw, and the wound is then closed up, and the first surgery is complete. Now, after this first surgery, there's about a six-week recovery process for the patient to get use of the device in their body, and the second surgery occurs when they open back up the residual limb, 
And this time, they take a titanium abutment and they attach it to the screw that is already in this bone. Then they put a silicon plate over this to prevent infection. And the prosthetic device is attached to the abutment and the surgery is complete. Now, patients aren't going to expect to just get up and start walking normally after the surgery. So like any other procedure, they need to go through rehabilitation. So during this rehabilitation, they use a shorter attachment instead of the normal size prosthetic device and a bathroom scale, and they do gradual weight training. So they gradually keep applying more and more weight until they reach their body weight, and then they know that it is safe to walk on their prosthetic device. Doctors really also like to emphasize that you want to strengthen the muscles in your hips and your legs. That way patients are able to walk confidently and comfortably. So they use elastic bands and body weight exercises to do so. Now, while this physical recovery is important, there's also an internal transformation that occurs as well. And this is called osseointegration. So osseointegration is basically a fancy term, meaning that the device becomes anchored to the body because bone cells fuse to the titanium. And this occurs during that six-week recovery process between the two surgeries. So the reason that titanium is used is because it's chemically inert to bodily fluids, so our bodies won't reject it as foreign material. This is a photograph by the Brainmark Osseointegration Center of Sweden, and the orange color shows bone cells, and the greenish color is actually the titanium device. And you can see how the bone cells are webbing onto the titanium device, so it's becoming a part of the patient's body. Now, because it's a part of the patient's body, patients will have increased sensation while using the device, and they studied this quantitatively using the machine shown on your left. So the patient will put their prosthetic device on the machine, and there will be a vibrating pin that starts going at a very low amplitude and will gradually increase in amplitude until the patient can feel it. Then they will hit the signaling device, and it is complete. So the results show that the osseointegration patients actually were able to detect this vibration sooner than the socket-type patients, which means that they can directly interact with their environment faster than the socket-type patients. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking right now, in theory, this sounds great, but it's a two-part procedure. You're getting part of your bone drilled out, and it could take 12 months to return back to your normal self. And in 12 months of your life, you can really accomplish a lot. So why should anybody do this? Well, this device is designed to last a lifetime. If it doesn't last a lifetime, then the part that's going to fail first will be the abutment. And this is a very easy fix because it doesn't require an invasive surgery, so doctors can simply go, replace the abutment, and be on your way. However, according to the Amputee Coalition, a person using a socket-type device may have to change their device every two to four years. So over a span of a 20-year period, a patient can use one osseointegrated device or up to 10 socket-type devices. Finally, another aspect that Reachers wanted to look into was what's the difference between reported problems during the socket type patients and the osseointegration patients? So the OPRA, which is the Osseointegration Prosthetics for the Rehabilitation of Amputees, sent out a survey to both groups of people, and they said, tell us what your problems are. So on the x-axis are going to be reported problems, such as skin irritation, back pain, discomfort while sitting. And the y-axis will be your reported percentages. And I want to note that the green color will be for the socket type patients, and the blue will be for the osseointegration patients. As this graph shows, osseointegration patients have significantly fewer reported problems than the socket type patients. For instance, if you just look at the skin irritation category, the socket type patients reported about 80% of skin irritation, while the osseointegration patients only reported about 20. So that's a 60% gap that we're talking about. And although this is only one study, it does show promise for osseointegration patients to have fewer reported problems. So I want you all to think back to Phil Coulson. For almost two years, Phil lived a very dissatisfying life where he felt like he was not living up to his potential. So he took his future into his own hands and underwent the osseointegration procedure, and he could not be happier. This is Phil Coulson today. He has already tested out his device by going snorkeling in Fiji to hot thermal springs in New Zealand, and he bought a snow scooter to try in the winter. So in summary, osseointegration is a two-part procedure, and then the device becomes anchored into the body, which improves sensation for the patient. And finally, one study showed that patients using the osseointegration device have fewer reported problems than the socket-type device patients, which shows promise. 
So hopefully patients using the, so the common socket type device will look to patients such as Phil Coulson and maybe they will want to live an adventurous life and they will be known as the next Phil Coulson. Thank you.